I don't know what picture myself.
Let's talk to Judy first. I don't understand what is recording.
Hi Abby, Shabbat Hi, Shalom. Susan. Shabbat Hi. Shalom. Hi. Good to see you. How many people actually show up usually from all the people who sign up? You never know, you know, but it's always up. Okay. It, and there's there's several who've come on already who you know hadn't actually signed up before, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we put out the link this time. I know time. a lot of people. Um, who probably have never been to any new school thing, who like signed up through um, my socials, like from people Fantastic. in chat. So yeah. We might need Misha to do like a basic intro to new school, you know? Yes. The, the or I can do that. Yes, but, well, uh, and I can, you know, we can all do that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna text him now just to see that he's coming. Okay. Give me a sec. Is Linda here yet for candle lighting? She's not here yet. Okay. She's not on here yet either. I'm gonna text her also. Okay. okay. Um for the C door, uh, do you are you gonna be sharing it? I I did once or... and I'm gonna keep doing it so as more okay. people join so oh, it's so not like too far not... up in the up in the chat. Do you want to put it on the screen? Do you want to put it on the screen or do we not want to do that? Uh, it's better if people just open it themselves and okay, manage great. it that way rather than screen oh, sharing. Um, we found. Okay. But, uh, give me a second. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Hello, Rabbi Abby. Roberta, hi. Shabbat shalom, everyone. I think when we start. Hi, Lizzie. Is Rabbi Misha here? I just, I just put the link to the Nushals. Hi, Linda. Shabbat shalom. I just put the link to the Nushul Sidor in the chat. I will do that a few more times so it doesn't get buried. And, uh, Everyone can have access to it. Ah, oh, Misha's here. Hi, Misha. Hi, Shabbat everyone. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Misha's there, too. Okay. I'm here. here. I'm here for just just for a quickie. Mm -hmm. oh. I won't be able to <laughs> sit in the thing. Just said I'm here for a quick. So. Hi, David. Hi, everyone. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I would say that I encourage people to put their videos on if they want, and I promise you we don't care how you're dressed. Even if you're wearing PJs or a bikini at the beach, um, as long as you're decent, uh, we would love to see your faces if you feel comfortable. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. But those who can do and those who can't move. Mm. This is a combination. It's good. Yeah, it is. Oh, look, you've already done the letter. Sam, you're not muted if you want to mute. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everybody. <laughs> Welcome, welcome. Abby, should we give another minute or two before we? I think I think we can do another two minutes. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> like, are we? Who are we as Jews if we start on time? I mean, come on. <laughs> well, maybe Yekisha, like German Jews, but okay. No, that's a slur. Just so we can welcome you properly, if you're brand new to the Nushal and you don't mind either putting your full name on your screen or sending it to me, I'm Susan Myers, as you can see in the chat, I'll know who you are and I'll, I'll know that you were here on this special night. So thank you.
Misha, while we're waiting, I've been meaning for the last few times I saw you to say hello for uh, uh, Moshe Halbertal, who says hello to you. <laughs> Whoops. Wow, thank you. That's a distinguished name. name. I, d I didn't ask how you two knew each other. He said he knew your dad or knows your dad. Yeah, yeah. He's, you know, Hebrew University uh, branja, you know. Huh. Yeah, the old the old guard of the of Hebrew University. Um, one sec. Thanks for doing this, Avi. This uh, reminds me a lot of the pandemic, the Shabbatot during the pandemic. <laughs> Thank you. Shalom. Shalom. I think I think it's one of the few good things maybe to come out of the pandemic. Um, I, I was uh, like at the peak of the pandemic in June of 2020. At some point, I let a seven Friday night it was like a Pride Shabbat, and I did seven on in seven different countries. Well, if you count New York and LA, but literally all over the world at different times, different services. It's beautiful. So. I guess it was one of the good things to come out. Yeah, we, we, it brought our community. It's basically, it spread out throughout the world. It brought it together. We had every single time zone we presented in, in, in the Shabbat. It was truly amazing. We had one person in New Zealand. It was 3 p.m. for her. Love it. 3 p.m. on Saturday afternoon. Yes, exactly. <laughs> We're almost ready for Abdallah. You know Abdi Stein, right? No. What? Um, maybe I'll maybe I'll play a little song until everybody gathers. How about that? But people people should mute or or be muted in some way. Yeah. Shalom aleichem, malachem. Da 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 da
Shabbat Shalom, everybody. So nice to. Uh, it is uh, so nice to be here with all of you. I wasn't planning on being here, um, but circumstances are such, and uh, I managed to uh, sneak away from my cooking responsibilities for a few minutes to sing a <laughs> song and uh, just to see your faces for a minute. I thought that would be nice. Um, you know. Uh, we're starting something new tonight, uh, which has to do with uh, building community, which I think is um, sourly needed right now. Everybody just needs to be with other people. And Jews, I find, have a, have a sudden need to be with other Jews. Um, not only, of course, but uh, th that's, uh, that's the moments in which in these last few weeks I've felt best have been when I'm hanging out with friends um, and with people who uh, who I have a common language with. So um, so on a shoestring, we're kind of starting this uh, attempt to do a, uh, a Shabbat every, uh, every Friday to have some kind of offering for the community because we thought, you know, we all, we all kind of need this. Um, and uh, uh, and that's 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 what we're here for tonight. And um, normally I'm not going to be in a lot of these, but there will always be someone amazing to lead it and some community people. I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, do one more niggin and then disappear and pass it on to Linda uh, and Abby, who are going to start to start us off. This is, I think, a bubover. Negan. Um, so I'm told. <clears throat> and it's really easy. Enjoy yourself. Sing out loud. Our rabbi, but the Trinity rabbi is coming on soon. Obviously. Sorry, mine's blacked out. What? Mine is blacked out. No one will see it. Please mute. I don't know what you're talking about. Will you complain before? See it. That's Rabbi Mish Mishnah. That's Mishnah, I call him. Can everyone please mute? Our time with his mother and everyone else in Israel daily. You need to mute your microphones. Guys, remember remember the Zoom days? Remember all this? Susan Weinstein, please mute yourself um, and, and anybody else. <clears throat> Thanks. Thank you, thank you. Last, Sorry. Okay, since, the, since this round was interrupted. Yeah, but, uh, but Abby, Abby, Abby wrote, it's a, it's a wedding. This niggin's a wedding niggin. From what I understand, Abby can correct me. What I understand, it's a specific niggin for the moment in which the uh, the bride's hinuma, the bride's uh, veil is lifted, right? Well, it, it's yeah, our... it's one of the most common. It's not everyone sings it, but it is a very common song for that for the moment actually when the bride comes in. But different communities are different. I've also said the nigan is older than Babev. Like Babev sings it a lot, but it predates even their existence. But yeah. All right, one more round. Yeah, 
Shabbat Shalom, everybody. I pass it on to Linda later. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Susan, if I may, just for a second, Susan, are you a, are you the host of the Zoom? Who is the host? I, I'm trying to figure this out. To give okay, okay. okay. One day we'll do it No together. one was made the host, so everyone could join freely. Okay. But I'm trying, which gives doesn't give me the ability to mute anybody. Okay, so one week to I will do, we'll do this together, sitting in the same room, and we'll figure it out. Okay. Well, I just want to welcome everybody. Thank you for coming tonight. And um, just a big one? elaborate a little bit on what Misha mentioned. We're starting something new. We're going to try to have four Shabbats a month uh, as a community, um, two of which will be in person. And then two of which will be virtual. And that's wonderful because it allows some of our community members from far and wide to join us who can't always make it to, um, to the city. So um, this is the first of our virtual Shabbats. Um, and we are, um, each time it's gonna be featuring a different um, guest. Could be somebody who's a musician or leads a meditation or a conversation or a, 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 a rabbi like Abby. Um, and we're all here just to, to learn together, to be together and um, to welcome and Shabbat together. So it is my distinct pleasure to welcome Rabbi Abby Stein. She's joined our community this year as scholar in residence. She's already made a big impact uh, for those of you who are here for the, yeah, we're getting a lot of, uh, for those of you who are here on uh, the High Holy Days, she's she's um, introduced herself and she is just a wealth of knowledge. Um, and uh, she is a rabbi, she's an activist, and she's got a fantastic sense of humor. Um, so I think we're all going to really enjoy spending time with her tonight. Um, and I'm going to welcome in the evening by lighting some candles. So if you happen to have your Shabbat candles handy, you can do the same. Um, so here I go. If there's any strike left, the gold matches. Here we go. All right. I need tomorrow to buy a lighter. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotov, Vitzivanu Lahadikner Shel Shabbat. Amen. Amen. Now over to you, Abby. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Um, Thank you, Susan, by the way, which I don't know, this wasn't part of the script or anything, but I want to, I feel like screaming this every time I'm in a room with Susan. Um, I think most of you know how much he does for this community. And if you don't, then you should. Susan is truly, I have worked with literally, and I'm not making this up, feel free to Google it. I've worked with hundreds of communities, sometimes on one-offs, and this time there's, I have the privilege of doing this longer with this community. But I've worked with so many people running communities, and I can tell you all, Susan is truly a unique power and, and truly beautiful presence. And I'm grateful for you every day that I talk to you and every day that we get to plan and we get to host stuff. And I want you all to know that as a community, we are lucky to have Susan with us. Um, I know Rabbi Misha has left already, but virtual, thank you to Rabbi Misha as well. Let's dive in. So just so you all know, we have, we're going to do a relatively solid cutoff at like 7.15 or so. So we're not going to be going to have another 30 minutes together, just so you all know what's going to happen. Hopefully towards the end, depending on how much time we have, we'll have some time for conversation. So I will do a short, ideally really short, Devar Torah. 
like a, a talk about this week's like Torah portion, talk a bit about what we're feeling and then opening up a bit. There's been so much going on and I want to start us by centering this moment. It feels like so much. Um, I know many of us were um, Shabbat Bereshit two weeks ago when we had this really beautiful service at the church and so many of us were there. Um, it's an intense time. It's an intense moment for so many, well, for all of us. I haven't met, uh, I have yet to meet a Jew over the past two and a half weeks, three weeks coming up who didn't feel it in one way or another. I personally have lost some people that I knew, some people that are members of the uh, same community I'm a part of, um, still are, are missing not just in the physical sense, but also as a as a community, as a Jewish community, um, over 200 people who were still um, kidnapped. There is so, can, Sue, can you mute yourself? Sue, could you mute yourself? Fine, hold on. Thank you, thank you so much. I love hearing all your voices, but it's Zoom and too many people talk, it, it becomes, so I just want to start this moment by centering that. There, there's a lot of, we're feeling this moment of darkness, moments of lost despair. And I wish, like, I think I know a lot of us are coming for Shabbat and we're hoping that someone is going to just be here to tell us that it's all magically going to be okay. I wish. But I do think that coming together, we can at least be together. We can maybe... um if I dare to say we can feel the despair together, but also know that together there's nothing we can't accomplish. Um, we could literally do anything and everything. And I will say one final thing, we'll talk more about that during the sermon. This week, in many ways, start the Jewish story of the diaspora, the Jewish story of being in exile, of not being home, not feeling at home, in some ways starts in this week's story portion, which literally starts with God telling Abraham, go, go away, go away from your home, go away from your father's home, go to a place that is at the moment unknown. It is a very intensely, and I will also say it can be a very beautiful Jewish moment of that recognition that even if we don't feel at home, whether that's a physical place, whether that's a spiritual place, or that's just an emotional place, we can take solace, we can know that this has been the Jewish experience for so long, and we're not just still here, we are living and thriving, and we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna be okay, and I don't know how to say this in other words other than I think we're gonna be okay, and it's gonna be hard, and it might be hard, but together we can do anything. So on that note, for those of you who can, there's the link that Susan just sent in the chat, if you want to open the C door, if you want to open our prayer books, we're going to do just a few songs, so we're going to start on page two. So I'm going to do just the last verse, so that is the last paragraph, and actually just the first verse of that. So it's the last paragraph, the one that starts, Higalena, or in English, show it. And then in the, if you're looking for the transliteration, then it's the bottom right paragraph, the first line. There you got a transliteration. So this song Show yourself, reveal yourself, my beloved, and spread upon us your shelter of peace. I could go on and talk for 10 minutes why I chose this song, but I think we all know. It is a traditional part of the opening of Kabbalah Shabbat, of welcoming the Shabbat, but also right now it just it feels as real as it gets. Um, I'm going to sing a version of that. I apologize in advance. I said that on the High Holy Days, and I will say it again. I'm not a good singer. I don't think so. But hopefully we can focus on the words and focus on the moment. <speaking in Hebrew> Frost, 
Show us love, show us peace. It's, uh, I think that's all I can say. Now, before we continue, I want to do something. We don't have a lot of time, so we're not going to do a full meditation, but I'm a huge fan of breathing. So this weird uh, uh, thing that I like to do, which is to breathe, um, which is something that apparently a lot of living creatures like to do. But what I would encourage us to do, and, and you don't have to do this exact same way, but what I do, and it works for me a lot, and if it works for you, you can try with me, to take a breath in, count to three, and let it out. Okay, and we can do that three times. Take a breath in. Do that two more times. So just take a deep breath in, hold it in for three seconds, and let it go. Imagine a moment of taking in all that's bad and trying our best. I don't want to be that cheesy rabbi who just goes up on the bima, goes on the pole, but it's like, here, you can all just, just take it in and then just let it go and it's all going to be amazing. But these moments are, have so much power, this moment of Shabbat. And so much of this moment is just saying we're taking a stop. Shabbat at its core is making a short stop saying the week has ended, the weekend is beginning, and we're marking this moment. And whatever practice, and I hope over the next few months, I will get to share even a bit more on that, but I think whatever practice works for you, whatever gives you that feeling of something has ended, there's something new that's now beginning. Whether that's candle lighting, whether that's food, whether that's a meditative moment, whether that's tuning into this, or whatever else it's gonna be tonight. Try to keep that conscious moment of tonight is not Tuesday night, it's not Wednesday night, it's not another night of the week, it's a night of taking a moment in time, making a space to be different, a space to relax, a space where we are allowed to say that all the bad things, everything that's happening, everything that has happened, we are given a day with a really good excuse to put it all on hold as much as we can and try to relax, try to enjoy it. So back to our door. We're going to go now to what is, let's see what page it is. Page seven. L'cha Dodi. L'cha Dodi is, is a, for me, something very interesting because contrary to what some people might think, it's actually not that old. It was only created in the 16th century. It's a relatively, for, for Jewish liturgy, it's a relatively recent addition that has become so much a big part of our liturgy. And it translates to literally, come, my beloved, let us go welcome the bride. We're going to go welcome Shabbat. It's uh, to the, the people who wrote this, which were the Kabbalists living in, in 16th century in Spot and, and what was at the time, Ottoman Palestine, um, 
roaches and they did this physical moment of going out into the field. They would physically go into, if any of you have ever been to Tzfat in Israel, there's this beautiful and like awe inspiring mountains and just like walking out and doing that as we have said, like this physical moment of we're going to welcome this day. We're going to make this day different. So I was singing in one of the tunes that I really like, and some of you might know the tune, and if you pick it up, feel free to sing along. Might turn out to be a mistake to sing it by myself, but okay. Shamo vizachor bediborecha, Ishmia nuelam yuchat, Adunai echad ushmorecha. Le shemo tifer ed veliti la lechad odi litrat kala penei shaba. Lekrat Shabbat lechu v'nelcha ki mekor avracha mei rosh mikadem nesucha stof ma'ase b'machshava tchila lecha daudi lekrat kala penei Shabbat nekabila. Lechadoedi Likrat Kala Pene Shabbat Nekavila. Next one I want to sing in English because I think the words are very, they're very, they're perfect for this time right now. Hmm. Trying to find, oh, it's this one, Palace of the Queen. Never done this before in English, so bear with me. Palace of the Queen, secret city, rise, shake of the dust, shake of the dust. Long have you sat in the valley of tears, her compassion flows <laughs> over you. Wake up, wake up, for your light has come. Rise and shine, rise and shine. Woke in a woke and speak a song. The glory of spirit shines over you. Lechadodi kala penei shabbat I'm going to do one more prayer, and then we'll, we'll do a more Neskadish at the end. But for now, just one more prayer. And talking about breathing, I think we can do some more breathing together. So we'll do the Shema on page uh, 11. 
So just the top of page 11. And what we're going to do is do a word and a breath. Okay, so we say a word, take a breath, word, take a breath for the whole Shema. Well, just the first line, but yeah. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. So I'm going to pray it for now. So I want to talk like how about I talk for about three to four minutes? And then I actually want to open up. We're not going to have a lot of time, but we'll have about five minutes to be in conversation, to talk together. So I would actually encourage you, if there's something you want to share, start maybe make some notes for yourself, start thinking. It could either be something related to what we're going to talk about, but it could also be just generally something that's on your mind. I will encourage everyone to take at most only 30 seconds when you speak. Even that only gives us space for maybe 10 people, maybe less. And we are a lot more than that. So start thinking if you want to share something. And we'll do that in about four to five minutes. But let's go to uh, this parsha. Let's talk to this week's Torah portion. So every week for uh, about 2,000 years, we have come up with a system where we are like, the Torah is very big. It's very, there's so much going on. So how about we split it up into 52, 54 portions. And every week we focus on one. So this week's is Lech Lecha. It is the third one of the Torah generally that we just finished on Simchat Torah, finished on the holidays and started uh, two weeks ago. And this is the third week that we have. But it's a very, there's a lot happening. They give you a bit of a crash course. And, and, and I encourage you all, if you feel like it, to look it up and to learn more because this week has a lot in it. But a bit of what's happening, it, it, it opens up with God telling Avram, which is actually Abraham, but not named Abraham yet, named in Hebrew Avram or like Abraham. There's the, the hey, the, the half sound is still missing from his name. And God tells him, um, leave your house. Go away. Literally. Lech lecha, ma'artzecha, mimoladetcha. Like, go away from your land, from your birthplace, from your father's home. Oh, and where you should go? El ha'aretz asher ha'eka. To a land that I will show you. Not showing him yet, not telling him anything. I will tell you where to go. And then goes on to tell him that, here, I'm going to give you so many blessings. You're going to become a big nation. You're going to become, uh, so whoever blesses you will be blessed and whoever curses you will be cursed and goes on to give them a lot of words. But we have to realize that at this moment, as far as we know, Abraham has no kids, has no land, has nothing with him. And there this God comes and tells him, listen, everything is going to be amazing. You're going to be so blessed. You're going to have, yeah, everything is going to be great. Okay, if you say so. And then the parsha basically goes on to Avraham going through a lot of struggles. He goes through a literal war. His nephew that's with him gets taken away by, by some people, gets kidnapped basically by some people. This person who was living in Mesopotamia, which was at the time, and uh, at least geographically speaking, still is. There's a reason that that region was called the Fertile Crescent, one of the most fertile plains places in the universe, one of the on the on Earth, a place where there is an abundance of food. It was, if according to the biblical story, and I'm not here to tell you what is and isn't true. This isn't the point. We're looking at the text and and focusing on that. So we're looking here at about 4,000 years ago in Mesopotamia. It was basically at its peak. Big cities, a lot of culture. There is everything going for it. 
And there is this person who has lived there, who has his whole family. And we know, at least according to the Medrash, his father was quite well off. His father was running a big shop for idols. And we're talking like he has literally everything he needs. And then God comes to him and is like, hey, listen to me. Um, nope. Go to this place, which is basically a desert. And I want you to go live there. And that's where you're going to succeed ultimately that's where you're going to get everything and we learn later that actually god told him quite already then that yeah to be honest there's still going to be a lot of problems your descendants are going to be slaves for 400 years people are going to torture them and kill them but eventually eventually and like 400 years from now when you and all your kids and grandkids are all dead but your descendants are eventually going to get something there and he does it Here's what I want to say. I think the questions, this is like one of those places where the questions, if we think on it with our brains and we look on this story, we're like, okay, I mean, if I started hearing a voice that is telling me to do all of that, I'm sorry, but um, no. Go talk to someone else. Leave me alone. And I want us to think for a second of the Torah as there's a reason why those stories are told. Regardless of our beliefs, these are the stories that our people have worked with for 3,000 years. And we are not told everything. According to the Torah, Avram lived for 175 years. The few stories don't even cover, cover maybe two or three weeks of his lifespan. But there's a reason here why this story, this message, somehow became so important. It became we are called the Abrahamic religions or like Abraham in Judaism is considered the father of all the believers. Because this story is telling us something very important. Very often we sometimes, I don't want to say we need because I don't believe in the whole like you need to be tortured, you need to be like a starving person, you need to have this like very tragic backstory to become a hero or something that Hollywood seems to love and something so many of the stories that we grow up with seem to love. I see this story rather as a story told to us after the fact. When I look on the story of Lech Lecha, go away, the message that I am getting is that we are looking at it in the future. We are looking at it after this story has happened. We are reading it three, four thousand years after the story is being written. And we're still struggling. I mentioned before in this Parsha, you got Abraham dealing with his nephew being kidnapped. Does that sound familiar, familiar to anyone? We read at stories of starvation, stories of feeling like we're not a ho at home, feeling like we don't have a home. And it's very easy for us to be like, what's next? Where are we going? What's going to happen? How do we deal with all of this? And the Torah is telling us, look at this. Do any of you know what's the most best-selling book in the world? Hint, it includes this exact story. And we can, I'm, not gonna, I'm not here to give you a theological reasons why the Bible became the best-selling book, but there's a reason for us to look on those stories and be like, this isn't the first time. The, Tal the Talmud says that the, the torture, the, pro the problem of a big group of people is half of the solution. For us to know that what feels like so unbearable, as a people, we have been through a lot worse. As a, it's, I, I know, because right now you can all tell how great I'm feeling about everything that's going on. But I wish we could say, oh no, we've been through like, the, the fact that some people had it worse or that our ancestors got killed in gas chambers doesn't necessarily feel better for everyone when 1,400 of us get slaughtered or, or, or so on. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't always work that way. But the knowledge that we have gotten over so much worse should tell us one thing that we can do this. It should tell us that no matter what, we are stronger than any individual story. We are stronger than any individual struggle because together we have a power that no one can beat. Okay, I went a bit longer than I thought I would, but I, I wanted to make sure we, we get this. We understand that, yes, this is new, but also it's so much isn't new. 
So I want to like, so we only have like really a handful of minutes. I know, Linda, I know you have a hard out soon and I want to make sure we have time to, to get your to do a Hamotzi as well. Um, and we want to do Kiddush. But I want to open a few minutes. We'll take a few people as much as we have and try to keep it short. But if you want to share something, if you could please raise your hand, either in video or raise your hand virtually at the bottom. If you go to reactions, not reactions, where is it? Where's the raise hand option? At the bottom of your screen somewhere. Under reaction. Go ahead. Yes, Roberta, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll try to be so quick. Um, something else I discovered in the Parsha this week that is exciting for me is a, a new relationship between Sarah and Hagar. That instead of the uh, misogynist, age old, patriarchal, misogynist reading that has spawned the Handmaid's Tale and you know, just pitting them against each other. I was thinking, Sarah pushed Hagar to go and 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 find her own. To, uh, she was her slave, and she pushed her out. And Hagar went out with her son and and spoke to God, and God spoke back to her. And I thought, this is what this this parsha is about step out of what we've been taught by the patriarchy and the xenophobia in our tradition and find, look at it with new eyes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I mean, that's another part. I didn't even touch on that, the part of my God, which is, yeah. But yeah, it's also the reference, like traditionally, like there's just like the, the this week is just too intense. The whole like, because traditionally also like, you get Jews and Arabs who were traditionally descendants of Ishmael, which comes in this. I'm telling you, if you if you like reading the Parsha, you wouldn't be disappointed this week. Thank you, Roberta. Uh, Michelle? Michelle? Shabbat shalom, Rabbi. Shabbat shalom. Yeah. Like you, I'm a woman of trans experience myself. I live in Florida and I'm probably going to have to move in the coming weeks out west. Don't know exactly where yet. What words of calm or peace can you offer someone like me? Thank you for bringing that up. Like, uh, I think similar to what I've been saying until now, here's what I would say right now. It, it, it sucks. It's it's a disaster what's going on specifically in Florida and specifically with human rights. And like, I, I think it's going to get better eventually. I'm a strong believer of like the arc of the universe bends towards justice. But I'm always say I'm always concerned of the people we love, we lose along the way. I'm always concerned of what I will say is, and I think that goes, that's true for our trans community, just like I said, for the Jewish community. We have been through so much so more. People have tried to get us for so long. And I truly believe that at least as a community, we have come out, we have come out a lot stronger. We have come together, we've stood up for each other. And the strongest thing that I can say, and I want to like wrap up, but the strongest thing that I can say is that as a community, no one can hurt us. And I mean that. We are stronger together and we can get through anything. And I would say finding community might be the biggest challenge, but once we do. I believe that we can get through everything. Thank you for bringing that up. I would also if you, encourage you if you want to email me and we can talk a lot more. This isn't like for, for two minutes, but thank you for bringing that up. I think we can take one more person if there is anyone. Anyone else who wants to share or say something? I can't see everyone. So you can also just unmute yourself and start talking if you want. Otherwise, we'll move on. Okay, then. Um, I want to do a more in Kaddish also, but I want to be, um, I want to be conscious of Linda having to leave. So I'm going to we'll do Kiddush, we'll do Motsi, and then after that, we'll have a moment for more in Kaddish as well. So I'm just going to get up and get some grape juice that I forgot to bring before, and we're going to do Kiddush. So also for you, if you have any wine or grape juice or Kiddush stuff or anything you prefer to use, take a moment to grab it and we'll do Kiddush. Thank you.
see if the, I think it's in our C door. Let's just make sure. Or not. It's actually not in the C door as far as I can tell. So we'll, we'll just, you can all follow along with me. יום השישי ויחלו השמיים וירץ וכל עצבם ויחללים ביום השביעי מלאכתו אשר עשה וישבות ביום השביעי מכל מלאכתו אשר עשה ויברכו לים את יום השביעי ויקדש אותו כי בו שבת מכל מלאכתו, מה שברא אלוהים לעשות צברי. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם, בורא פרי הגפן. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר קידשנו במצוותיו ורצבנו, ושבת קודשו ומאביו רצון הנחילנו. זיכרון למעשה בראשית, כי הוא יום תחילה למקראי קודש, זכר ליציאת מצרים, כי הבנו וחרצה ואותנו קידשת מכל העמים, ושבת קודשך באהבה וברצון. הנחלתנו, ברוך אתה אדוני, מקדש השבת. בחיים. לינדה, תקי את הווי. רייט, אתם מוצאים, אנחנו נכון את הווי. אה, באמת נכון. Yes, thanks to Fairway and my husband, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fairway is very good challah. I'm also right next to Fairway. They have very good challah. All right. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech alam Amutzi lechem in haaretz Amen. Thank you, Linda. I have some um, announcements. So go for it. Yeah, go for the announcements now. And then we'll, we can do a morning Scottish at the end. I just, I know you need to leave at 7.30, I think. So I don't want to keep you. Go for it. All right, great. Well, thank you all for attending. And thank you, Abby. This was brief, but really mind-blowing. <laughs> um, we have, uh, as we mentioned, a whole bunch of Shabbat services lined up for the coming weeks. Um, on November 11th, there's going to be a morning Shabbat. It's going to be the B-Mitzvah of Emilio Cos. Kozlovsky at First Prez. November 17th, we'll have a Friday night virtual Shabbat on Zoom like tonight. December 1st, we have a living room Shabbat. You guys will all be receiving an email invitation and you can sign up. These are potlucks at members' homes and they're super fun. And December 8th, we're going to have a Hanukkah celebration at First Prez, which is going to be really fabulous. Um, We have a bunch of Shavrutot that are launching this fall and um, including a three-part seri series by Rabbi Abby. And those are all going to be announced soon. I've participated in a number of these. These are fabulous. They're usually very small, intimate, on Zoom generally. And um, you can really go deep. And it's a, a great way to, to meet other people in, in, and have an opportunity to actually have conversation, which is hard in a big group like tonight. Um, on November 6th, here in our apartment, you can all see our orange kitchen in the flesh if you want to come. Um, Lizzie Byrne de Geer, who is our uh, last year's scholar in residence, is going to be hosting her rooted and held Shavruta in person. And it's going to be featuring our daughter, Eva, who just returned from uh, quite abruptly an internship program in Israel. And she's going to be talking about her experiences there. Um, and we're going to all be in conversation about our unique relationships to Israel. Um, also, I'd like to uh, uh, put in a plug for the weekly Torah Bite. This is fantastic. It's every Thursday from noon to one on Zoom. 
I just have it blocked out on my calendar as like to no appointments. I make pretend that I have like a standing meeting on Thursdays and I log in from my office and it's fabulous with Misha. We go through, we read Torah, we talk, we read um, um, all the accompanying texts and it goes on, you know, all, all throughout the year. So you really get a sense of the of the story. Um, it's wonderful. And it's um, this year we're going to be focusing actually on the Haftaras that go along with uh, each week's um, uh, uh, portion. So I encourage you to try that as well. For all other um, uh, information, you can reach our website um, or follow us on Instagram, new shul, the new shul NYC. I'm not on Instagram. So um, uh, if you are, that's where you find us. Or you can always email Susan, who is um, the master of, of ceremonies for all of these events and um, knows exactly what's going on at all times. So thank you all for being here and I hope to see you again soon at one of these events. Thank you, Linda. Um, to wrap up, we'll just do a more in Scottish. So if there is someone that you are remembering, um, if you can put their name in the chat, that would be great. Um, it is on page 17 of the CDOR, the digital CDOR. You can put any names in the chat and we'll remember them together. Um, you can also, if you are saying Kaddish, you can also unmute yourself for this and we'll do it together. I'm just gonna, yeah, so we got all the names there. I hope everyone can see that. Um, give it another second. Good, so on page 17, and if you are saying Kaddish, feel free to unmute yourself. Itkadashemeraba. <laughs> לאלה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה, תשבחתה ונחמתה, תאמירן בי עולמה ואמרו אמן. יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיה וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ועל כל יושבי תבל ואמרו אמן. Thank you everyone, שבת שלום. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Susan. Um, I I don't know what the host is like. I need to get going, but I think, I don't know if people can stay on and chat or not. Um, I guess you can. So anyone who wants to stay on, please do. They can unmute yourself. Um, otherwise, we'll hopefully see you all soon. Shabbat shalom. Just can I say one quick thing to, to Rabbi Ali? Yes. Thank you for those verses that you, um, if, uh, La Cado D that you did in English, because I actually have never heard it in English and I don't know all those words. It was great. Thank you for that. And Thank you. your candlesticks, Linda, are beautiful. <laughs> Gorgeous. Okay. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Thank you so much. Shalom. Thank you very much. Shabbat shalom. Good to see you, but I'll see you too. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Peace and love to everyone. Hope yeah. the kids are good. Great Barbara, to see we... you.
Yeah, good to see you guys. See you. See you in person soon. Soon, yeah, that'll be great. Good. So I like the good. announcements from Linda. There's good, right? Yeah. <laughs> she did great. She did great. Yeah. Thank you so much.